What's going on, everybody? My name is Nico Blitz. This is Beat This Philippines, and I have somebody I'm super excited to interview. Um, you might have known him for his record on Kendrick Lamar's Love. You might know him for Run Wild, Run Free, or you might know him from his latest song called Reverse that dropped during Filipino American History Month. Everybody, please welcome Zakari to the mother freaking building. What's what up, up man? I love pleasure, your voice. Pleasure to be here. So thankful. <laughs> so gracious. So uh, let, me, let me just say, let me just say off camera, you know, I, I, I didn't even know what your voice was going to sound like. But then as soon as I heard your voice, it, it was just one of those things where I'm like, this doesn't match what I ever imagined it to be. Do you get that, that happens to me all the time? That happens to me all the time when I go in with artists. I feel like, you know, you never know. Singing voices be completely different. <laughs> It really do be. I mean, bro, when I first heard your, um, you know, your voice on love, which I feel like a lot of people, it was, that was the introductory track, right? Like, for sure. That, that's kind of how I imagined your voice to be. Maybe not always so singy songy, but yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's completely different from your talking voice. It is like Michael. It is like Michael, bro. Like, cause he would sing so high and that's how he would talk too. Yeah. It's nuts. And you know, some people have that skill of, having or being able to manipulate their voice enough so that they sound super different on like you know their yeah. actual singing voice. <clears throat> was that purposeful for you or i mean i think that's <laughs> the filipino side right where you can mm -hmm. so good at imitating voices and playing with your range i feel like um yeah having that half filipino part of me and then my mom is a musician to the white side and she's also a singer so i feel like it's i don't know man mm -hmm. i just i was blessed with a big range I For love sure. that, bro. I love that. <laughs> so, like, um, you're from Bakersfield, California, correct? Bakersfield, California. Let, let me just say before I want to get into your family <laughs> history, right? Do you know about this kid? He's a rapper from Bakersfield. And then the song, it literally starts off with, from fucking Bakersfield, California. Oh, bro. He, he went viral <laughs> for, like, <laughs> uh, viral. Uh, yes, yes, bro. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Bakersfield to go viral for the most ridiculous shit sometimes, bro. I remember that kid. <laughs> yeah, and dude, Baker whenever Shield I pass California. by Bakersfield, whenever I pass by Bakersfield on the five, that's like the first thing that pops mm -hmm. into my mind. But for that's you, you grew up man. there. You grew up there. So what was it like for you growing up in Bakersfield, man? Uh, to be honest, when, when people ask me that, I always say the same thing: is like, I'm really thankful. I love growing up in Bakersfield, California. Mm. Um. The family I grew up with, too, was all Filipino because my mom's side is pretty scattered. But <clears throat> I have a big Filipino family, a big foundation in that area. And even in Delano and Lamont with um, all the agriculture and the grape farms, like my dad. Um, I don't know, man. I I'm thankful for it because I, I, I like the pace of it. When I come to mm -hmm. L.A. now and, and living here for almost 10 years now and I think about how I came up in Vegas, so I'm really thankful because there's a lot of uh, it's crazy over here in L.A. Yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> it's, it's I nuts, can't imagine bro. growing up here. The The side of Bakersfield I grew up in, too, was perfect, man. It was melting pot, great skate. I don't know, man. Very, like, I mean, creative group of people, too. Young, young, young people. Yeah, music yeah. scene was great, too. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because I think if you're just, you know, just a Californian, right? And then whenever you pass by that five, you pass through Bakersfield and then all you see is nothing but farmland. So mm -hmm. I think the last thing on people's mind would be like Bakersfield is a source for entertainment and music. But oh, bro, Jordan you know, Love, Green Bay Packers quarterback, Bakersfield. And then, um, oh, okay, bro, even even my high school specifically, we had people on um, So You Think You Can Dance. One of my other friends got uh, second place on American Idol. Off oh, my wow. same high school. One of them's in a Marvel TV show right now. We're in the same drama department. There was something about this like little corner of Bakersfield that was just I don't know, man. Yeah, it's, so it's Bakers interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Bakersfield really popping like that. It is. Okay. It is. I feel like I feel like the way the way I look at it too is is so close to LA, so you know what's there and you know where you could get, but every day you're not influenced by it. If that makes sense, mm. you see where you have to go, but but coming up and being raised by it. There's not as much noise and you kind of have a focus on, okay, I want to get there and I want to do this. I'm yeah. not already here being surrounded by it constantly. I don't know if that, if that is the factor, but that's, that's how I think of it sometimes. 
Well, it's kind of like at <clears throat> arm's distance, Dan. I mean, yeah. To be honest, maybe like two hours away, but it's basically yeah, yeah. just like no. Two distance. hours is nothing now, especially yeah. if you're driving around California for years. Two hours is nothing. Exactly, bro. Exactly. Two hours will get you just. 10, 10 miles down the street <laughs> over yes. here in LA. <laughs> bro, two hours in LA is like 10 miles, 20 miles, bro. Oh my God. It's nuts. I've bro. gotten so it's used nuts. to it at this point. It's hilarious when you go back home too and you have to drive somewhere and someone's like, damn, that's far. I'm like, no, that's 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But so did you, um, you know, so last year I remember doing a video about you um, during Filipino American History Month. I remember that too. Yeah, that's when you and I started talking to each other. And um, if I could vaguely re re remember the information, um, I believe from Bakersfield, and then you moved to LA, and then you moved to Alaska, or am I getting the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. so, uh, so <clears throat> Bakersfield, Alaska, LA. Got oh. you, okay. Yeah, yeah. I went to Alaska <clears throat> right after I graduated high, high school. Like, Why is that? Uh, I know I wanted to go somewhere for the summer, so... At one point, too, you know, when they make you choose a career in, in high school or like where you want to study when you go after and things like that. I kind of like wanted to go in biology. Like I've always loved animals and stuff like that. Aside from music, I've always done music, too. But I just wanted to go somewhere in, in the wilderness. So I found this website that hired summer jobs. And Alaska is the only one that got back to me. <laughs> and and it was because a dishwasher got fired last minute. So I worked as a dishwasher for a lodge in Alaska for three summers. I would go there what? for the summer and come back. It was a fishing lodge. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, this is so <laughs> this is so random, I bro. I only applied to places that had wolves too, because I've always loved wolves for some reason. And um, it was the only place that got back to me. I told my parents, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna." Uh, I was still in high school when I got hired. I was a senior, so as soon as I graduated, I had to catch a, a plane to Alaska. What the hell? And yeah, so, what in the hell, dude? That's that's uh, that's definitely in, that's one of the more interesting stories that I've ever heard amongst any artist that I've ever yeah. interviewed. <laughs> it's funny too because um, some of my dad's friends and and my uncles would talk about how some of my uh, their family members and my Filipino uncles would go out to Alaska for the summers for the yeah. fishing canneries because there's yeah. a tons of Filipinos that would camp like they go out there and camp. My um, mm -hmm. Uncle Frank would tell me about it. I don't well, know, man. Know, Maybe it's so weird, though. Thinking it's back, it's weird, on man. It. I mean, so I did. Um, you know, every year I like to do a little bit of a history about like why Filipino Americans are like in the parts that there are, right? So, like for instance, like Filipinos were the first Asians to migrate from Asia to the United States, and the first place they hit was Morro Bay, California. So that's mm. why there's a lot of Filipinos in California. And then, you know, the um, the farmers union ended up um, having a strike over in Coachella Valley. And, you know, some farmers did a couple of things. One, if they couldn't get jobs over here, they migrated to places like Seattle, but they also migrated to places like Alaska. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the Filipino community, and I'm not sure if there was a lot of Filipinos where you were specifically at in Alaska, but a lot of Filipinos ended up moving there to yeah. become fishermen and to, you know, mm -hmm. start their living over there. Yeah, it, it is a thing out there to get jobs in the fishing and the canneries and stuff, which is cool, too, because I feel like, like, historically in indigenous, it's a, we're fishing people and a water people, too. So it would make sense that we would go there and catch yeah. fish. Be and work and, with fish, and so during that entire time, you were strictly just doing dishwashing at a fishing lodge. So my first summer, I was dishwashing, and and then the next summer, they had me back as a um, breakfast cook and meal prep. And then the third summer, I was a fishing guide, bear viewing guide. So I got bear to, viewing. I got to, yeah. So my boss was like, "Okay, if you go get your guide license before next summer, you can be a guide." <clears throat> so for the lodge, my, by the third summer, my job was just to take people fishing. And uh, and photographers to get pictures of bears up close. Okay, I gotta ask. <laughs> Wait, hold on, bro. Oh, no, no, let's go, let's go, let's go. I gotta come ask. back to the strikes, though. Come back to those strikes. Okay, I'll come back to the strikes. Before we get to the strikes, what's the wildest like thing you've seen in the wilderness? Because you're doing like just bear views over there already. I mm -hmm. think is a little insane. Yeah, uh, I can for a Californian. I, 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 <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
I've definitely um I have bear I've been charged by bears maybe I've been charged at once but I bears have come up to me multiple times and, like smelled me but it was all um I'll tell you I'll tell you one story so it was my third summer I'm guiding and um I get this a lot of times because I'm I'm working and living at the lodge so the guests come and they can book an experience where I take them out of the and where I'm at in Alaska, it's not a town, it's nothing. You take a float plane and you land in the middle of the national park and you stay in your little hut for the whole summer. Mm-hmm. And um, it was her first time fly fishing. And one of the things I tell my um, clients before I would take them out is you can't drag the salmon up to the shore when you catch it because the bears will see it and they'll come get it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> cause the bears are everywhere like dogs. Like you'll be fishing, you'll see a couple bears that way. Be a bear there. You're living with them. And then first thing she does, she hooks into a big salmon and drags it onto the shore. I'm like, okay. So I go down to get the hook out of its mouth. And as soon as I'm down, crouched on this fish, I look up and it's literally a bear charging full speed at me um, down the bank because it wants the fish. It's not worried about me, but I want to try to get this hook out of its mouth too because you don't want the bear to swallow the hook. Yeah. So I'm trying and that was probably the closest call. That was a little scary just to see. I didn't I didn't fear like the bear would attack me, but he took the fish definitely right from my feet and like <laughs> Oh my god. I'm not going to lie. I would have been terrified. Was the lady terrified? She must have uh, been. <laughs> I think she was. Yeah, she definitely. Was. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what she even looked like. I remember. Her. That's why you don't pull the fish up to the shore. And then there's there's been times like that where bears will just come up on me. They'll see me release a fish or something. And they'll come up and like smell smell me. So wh- what do you do in this situation? Because I feel like just based off YouTube videos or even cartoons, people just try to get like bigger than the bear. But like, is that yeah, something yeah. that you actually do? <laughs> so that that's the interesting place about the specific place I worked at. It's called Brooks Lodge in Katmai National Park. And I didn't know this when I got hired there, but it's the number one bear viewing lodge in the world. So <clears throat> there's a phenomenon there. Like if you ever see bears catching fish out of waterfalls, the photos from there are from mm. there because there's like a plank built and 20 bears will fish next to each other. And this is like a phenomenon. It doesn't really happen anywhere else where bears get along that well in such a tight space on one river. So the bears were kind of, they've been, they've been, they've had years of being used to being around other bears and other people. There's so mm. much salmon, they don't care. They're eating 60, 70 pounds of salmon a day. They gotcha. Care less so they're not even, you. If, if you're not, not bothering fighting. them, yeah. If you, if you don't frighten them, they're not injured. Like th- There's things like that can make it more dangerous where I was specifically. But the best you can do is just stand still. You can, you can raise your arms if it's being aggressive, if you feel like it's already coming at you. <clears throat> you know. But if it's just kind of walking by, you step back and you just try to give it as much space and you let it move on. Okay. It's just like they have the right of way. You, the, the rule yeah. out there too is you, you, you can never approach them. You can either stand still or move back. So yeah. A lot of times I would just sit there and let them walk by me all day. I get that. I get that because the second <laughs> they feel like you're being aggressive, they're going to be more aggressive to mm-hmm. you. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And, it, and by my third summer too, I was pretty used to it because I lived with them for three summers. So I wasn't too scared by them, but I remember my first year – First coming on close to these bears was insane, dude. Well, that's just a PSA if anybody <laughs> ever decided. Where were, you said it was Brookfield, Alaska? Uh, Brooks Lodge. Brooks Lodge yeah, in my, Alaska. my National Park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I might have to take you a trip find over. your way I, out there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, You wanted to talk about the strikes, right? My dad was a part of that. Um, really? I don't remember what years it was, but he told me he was 12 or 13 when those strikes were going down. And he still told me crazy stories about that shit. He kept working. So the older Filipinos were kind of mad at him. So that he, he told me of, of days at work because he's 12, uh, 13. You just want to get a few dollars. Yeah. And it, um, but he told me he would leave work and they'd be throwing rocks at him and stuff through the window. Him and his buddies. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, crazy stuff, man. I mean, that's always it's a the- trip. That's the difficulty when it comes to these things. I mean, I, the SAG Afra stuff is happening right now, and you know, my um, my brother in law <clears> actually <throat> is part of a strike right now too. And it's difficult when you have this like, well, 
it's it's an overall good cause, yes, but then there's also people who are trying to feed their families or just trying to make a living. Oh at yeah, time. there's people who don't who don't care what you guys got going on if they're gonna if they're gonna feed my family and me today. That's what I have to do. And you can't judge exactly. either side. You have to see it from both. It, it's exactly. tough though. It, it, yeah, it's definitely. I don't know tough. what I would do in those situations. If neither would I, man. Neither would I. <laughs> um, so how how do you go from Alaska? to LA mm, I always knew I wanted to do music so I mean I saved some money while I worked over the summers not as much as I should have but I went to LA music school in Hollywood Lit. after the three summers that was always the plan because I've been doing music since I was like eight years old and I was like leading my church band from seventh grade through high school too and jazz band through high school and and all that stuff, like YouTube videos and covers. That's what I was doing in my bedroom, like, and all through high school. Oh, lit. Yeah. You you were, like, truly Filipino, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 100%, <laughs> bro. 100%. The car was yeah. up there with the AJ Raphaels and everybody, I'm trying, to remember, I'm trying to remember the era, like, what the cover videos would be. So sick of love songs. So that's when that shit was going out. What else is that? I did a Justin Bieber one, man. Oh, yeah. You definitely grew up in the same <laughs> era where every Filipino was doing that, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's nuts. So you came over MySpace here to LA. Too. MySpace music, bro. The best. The mm. best. Um, but yeah, so you came kidding. over here like you came over here for music school, really, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that- I kill it for the uh, Musicians Institute. And it went good, man. I learned a lot there. I feel like... <clears throat> I feel like I had known how to sing so much from just being self-taught and just singing my whole life. Um, but there was definitely like real techniques and teachers that I met that, that were great. I ended up failing. My It was first certificate program, but yeah. I just got too busy recording outside of school. So it wasn't anything I was too upset about. Yeah. Do you think, um, cause currently I'm in school right now for production, mixing and mastering. And I definitely see the difference between like learning with instructors versus trying to learn on YouTube mm-hmm. is school something that you would like recommend for people. Or do you feel like maybe it was something you could have got away with not doing because this mm. creative space for music, right? Like it's kind of like a free for all, like, you know, everything <clears throat> is subjective. If it sounds good to you, then, you know, that's your sound quote unquote. Right. But mm. a lot of people tend to not do like the music school route. It's it, that's a hard question to answer because all schools are so different and all teachers are so different mm-hmm. because first of all, I think anyone can teach themselves as far as they'd have to go or as much as they put in to themselves learning, they can, they can learn it. That's a fact. But I think I've learned more from specific teachers and even mentors in my life more than like an actual school. Mm. I would, I, I don't it. know if it's school in general, but maybe I, maybe I'd recommend like private instruction, like something that'll kind of keep you disciplined to practicing and things like that. I think that's all the good thing about school too, is it keeps you in it like always, but yeah, I wouldn't say you need it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's all so different for everyone. It's all subjective. Really? It's all subjective. I hear that, man. I hear that. Fuck school. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, bro. It's so funny. Like literally after college, I was like, I'm never doing school again. But then this opportunity. It would be class by class for me too. It'd be one class I really love. And then I don't like the next class. I learned nothing. So yeah, bro. uh, It's funny. Like be interested and inspired by it for me to soak something in. I feel like, well, you know, um, there was an interesting thing and, um, I don't want to jump the gun too quick cause I, we were going to talk about this anyway, but, um, your song reverse, right? Mm-hmm. When I heard it, I was like, this is cinematically modern. Yeah. It sounded like a movie, but on an actual like song, mm-hmm. right? That's the best way I can actually describe yeah, yeah. it. And, um, Issa actually said that there was a very interesting story behind this record and the creation of it something about you going on camping trips oh yeah a, yeah and going and recording a guitar through like next yeah. to rivers and everything Can yeah yeah man phone? so this song to the song i started it four years ago so that's how long it's been traveling with me and i think that's another thing is the time i've had to spend with it and listen to it and evolve but 
I remember two years in, we've had it, and we had some guitars in the in the middle section there. And um, I really like to to travel and make music, so I got this Airbnb like on this river up in Truckee. And I brought Jay Lewis, James Hunt, he's an engineer. He brought his whole setup. So we gutted the living room with our Airbnb. <clears throat> and um, we were able to run microphones and guitar cables through the window of it. And um, yeah, man, we got to record the sound of the water, the river in there. We got to record the acoustic guitars all there. So that made the whole section special, I think, too. I feel like I feel like once I once I write a song and, and start a song that I love that's like a timestamp and personal to me, I like to add things like that to it to solidify it, I feel like. I don't know, like real world sounds and things like that. Earth. Well, feel, yeah, we got Earth there. I feel I'm like about. for you, especially with the way you recorded it, it could bring you back to a moment of time for you. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, music nowadays is very cookie cutter. You know, anybody can make music nowadays. But, like, for something like that, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of, like, stories behind that whole trip in general that you remember just because you hear, like, the the river in the back or, you know, everything that you recorded, bro. So it's kind of cool to see, like, I guess your music really be a timestamp for you. Yeah, man. I think that's been, like... The thing that stood out to me too with artists that I love and that I listen to is like if a song or an artist can bring you back to a certain time, I feel like they, I don't know, that's my favorite. I feel like they yeah. have you forever. And then for your overall process, do you really find yourself like doing things similar to that when it comes to the overall creation of your music? Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I do. I feel like the songs that I release and that I put out and that I really love they all take me back to a certain a certain point in my life where I had to get something out. So, yeah. yeah so, sure. so what did you have to get out with Reverse? <clears throat> reverse was, was at a time when I was, I was first falling in love with someone. And it's just about that feeling where you literally can't stop thinking about him, whether it's like emotional, physical, and it's all those things when, you, when it first starts happening, those first few weeks or first few months. And that's kind of what that song is and what those strings and it's like you're trying to focus on other things and you can't. Yeah. That that butterfly. <laughs> that's dude, why that it moves butterfly, around so much. Bro, that butterfly stage will can make you or break you, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. It kind of remind you know, it kind of reminds me of uh, um one of my favorite records from you. I was singing it like damn near every day. It was sometimes yeah, yeah. uh when you were doing the hook with oh. class. Yeah, yeah, man, I love so that song good, too. bro. And it's funny because it's like you know I've been in a re- relationship for like three years now. We're about to go mm-hmm. on four in a couple months, but nice. like Congrats. you know, I I think what tends to happen is that like you could be so focused on like whatever you enjoy, right? Whether it be music or what have you, but you can have someone who's also a distraction, and at the same time, it's like as much as you love this distraction, it's like. I need to stop and like still do my own shit. And it's that constant battle of balance that you have to find mm-hmm. in yourself. <clears throat> yeah. That's always been a struggle with me when I find things that I'm interested in and that I love and that I'm passionate about to go way too far with it and mm-hmm. like lose the other side of it. And then, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you, you just start to lose yourself when you go too far, when you chase, when you chase the highs too far. You get the lows. The lows are too low. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like the past few years and even this this album is me kind of like moving through that. Mm, I feel and that. And figuring it out, you know? I feel that. Just on, It's just honesty all throughout the album for sure. Yeah. Well, you, you know, frankly, I believe your career started off publicly, right? On a very high note, a super Damn. high note. Love with Kendrick Lamar. I think literally everyone was just like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> who just literally, so everyone, insane, like, man. just it to everyone, it just seemed like it, you just popped out of nowhere, right? Yeah. So, like, what was, like, how did that even happen? <clears throat> like, who reached out? Was it TDE? Was it Kendrick himself? Like, man, it, there's so many strings you can pull when you go back. Um, 
But my manager is Musa. He's Top Dog's first son, firstborn son. Okay. And I'm the first artist that he brought to his dad's label. So he also came up with Kendrick and, and, and then watched his dad build the label and this whole thing. And um, I remember he, because the first song I have with Kendrick is the What's Wrong with Isaiah. So after he heard that one is when he had me come to the studio. It was like, Musa, you can bring him to the studio now. Mm. And that's how that happened. But I mean, the only way I met my manager was because I was working with Jay Lewis from Selection. <clears throat> and if you look back on my SoundCloud, the first oh. one of the first things that ever came out on SoundCloud was with my like a recording of my voice on it was Heaven Sent, and it was Jay Lewis dropped it through um, Selection. I didn't even know what Selection was. We yeah, recorded yeah, a voice yeah. memo, and this song went up to like hundred thousand. And I don't know what it's at now, but I didn't have any listeners before that. So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> me and Jay Lewis became really close. So I would start taking him to the studio. I would give him rides because uh, he didn't have a whip. And this is he was working for Trap Soul on Trap Soul with Bryson. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember Bryson left this big studio house to us for like two weeks. And I remember an a and sent Isaiah Rashad through with Musa. And that's how I met Musa, my manager. He took my number as a saxophone player. I would bring my saxophone to sessions. <laughs> yeah, well, I would bring the my contact just said saxophone yeah. player from Airbnb. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yes. As an artist, that would be like that's kind of me getting into the room because sometimes yeah. uh, artists don't want to like be in the room with upcoming artists, which is understandable. Or, or like this is their studio, this is their space. If you're gonna be there, you know, contribute to what they're creating. Don't. Yeah. To, yeah, yeah. So saxophone yeah, yeah. was the easy was the easy way in, man. Yeah, because yeah, my number you is saxophone really find, play. You don't yeah, really yeah. find too many saxophone players <laughs> trying to you know mm-hmm. do some hip hop shit. Yeah, man. I did some old saxophones for Isaiah a long time ago. He was one of the first artist I met out here from TD. Was Isaiah? That's super lit, bro. And yeah, I mean, there's a song with TD. me, him, and Kendrick. Yeah, what's wrong? Yeah, that's me, him, yeah, and Kendrick. Yeah. That that's that song changed my life before love. I mean, I love that you just like pop up on like all the TDE albums, just like yeah, you know, a little bit of here, yeah. a little bit of there. <clears throat> I think great, from the, from the outside, it's hard to tell what TDE is, but from the inside, all I've seen is like friends and family that came up together, and, mm-hmm. and it's a tight knit thing. And coming into it, I was lucky, man. I had Musa, and he put me in this house, this artist house with the boy Craig and that's changed my life. Teddy Walton was staying there. The dude produced love. Absol was living there for a bit. I got really close with soul as you know, uh, I met Mac Miller there. I met SZA there. I met Carter there. I met, I met so many people there. So there's so many strengths to pull, but it it definitely all started with me and Jay Lewis up at that studio house where I met Moose. Ever since I met Moose, I played him this stuff I had on SoundCloud and, Ask him if he'd manage me. But yeah. I love that for you, bro. I love that. Um, how was um what was it like for you meeting Mac Miller? Obviously, you know, rest in peace. And mm-hmm. you know, I feel like there's only a few people in this world who ever got the chance to meet Mac. Yeah. Um <clears throat> I didn't get to talk to him too much, but him and I would kind of just be a fly on the wall with him and Soul yeah. in the in the booth, you know what I mean? This is my second year in LA, and I don't even, I've never even really been around an artist like that. Yeah. But I remember him uh, sleeping in the studio, and he's asleep on the floor. It's a carpet. He's just on his back like this. <laughs> sleeping on the floor. And Abs- <laughs> Absol's asleep on the couch. And then I'm at the studio desk recording myself while they're asleep, and I'm playing it. And I remember Matt getting be like, What is this? He's like, That's you? He's like, That's hard. <laughs> That's my memory, man. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. You got yeah, the you got the Mac Miller stamp back then. That's love, bro. That's love. Um, that yeah. motions record, by the way, with Ab Souls Fire, dude. We did that in that studio. And yeah, oh, so that, that was on a, that couch. Damn, so that That's was six, like what eight years, years ago? Years, five years, six years, seven years, something like that, bro. Oh my god, dude. How mm. do you wait? You hold on to your records for so long, bro. So long, man. Is is that just like a like is that a conscious move? Like I don't know, man. I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. I feel like I'm indecisive sometimes and you wait for certain moments. Like I'm happy when the time motions came out, you know what I mean? 
mm-hmm. but it's um I don't know, man. I think as just as a new artist, I I I wasn't sure. I was still trying to find my sound, and I I feel like I wasn't sure what I wanted to start with. If that makes sense. I made yeah. so many different genres and so many different things in this where it's like, what do I want to put out? How do I want to introduce myself? So I think so, that's because I have thousands of records, but I have so yeah. many records and songs I've made. It's hard to make. It's hard to make the choice on what to put out sometimes. Well, I guess like, you know, we live in a world where it's all about immediacy. Like if mm-hmm. you record your song tomorrow, you're going to want it out within like the next month. You have the music mm-hmm. video, right? You have all this shit like ready and like you're ready to just push, 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 push. Whereas you are kind of like the, I guess, like anti, A-N-T-I <laughs> of that. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. whenever you drop a record, I'm like, cool. I was waiting for one already. And then mm-hmm. it sounds completely just like you. And yeah. it, it just sounds like a Zakari record for like lack of a better term. It just sounds like a Zakari record. Like, I guess where does all that patience come from in a world that pushes you to just constantly put yourself out there because you're very low key you're it seems like you're very to yourself and then when you do drop it's like super fucking good yeah i think that that's what happened with me is when i when i came into the game the quality of these albums and these singles and these artists that i was around was so high like the highest level artists Mm -hmm. So when you when you're around that and you see that and you're hearing things like concepts and like creating your own sound and experimenting with sonics it's like <clears throat> I could make a song right now and release it but there was just so much I wanted to learn first. Mm. I don't know. I, I put mm. a lot of pressure on myself too where if I feel like I I hear myself sounding like I have before or I hear a beat that I feel like I've heard before it I lose interest in it too. That's, that's another problem. I've, I, I'm all over the place, dude. I've bad ADD, bad ADHD ever since I was a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I put a lot of pressure on myself, like where it's like this, this has to be perfect, every sound and every song. Mm. And I think I've gotten much better at that now where I know myself better as well. Yeah. But it's like when you, you can make a bunch of songs and put them out, but are these songs me? Are these songs a part of me? Or am I still trying to figure it out? Mm. and yeah man it's 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 tough to find the balance though i will say i i think i i love the way i did it man i'm thankful for it because these past few years i've learned so much to the point where you can put me in a studio by myself and i can do everything in the room yeah and experimenting with sounds and learning from so many producers and artists is just like i'm ready now that's how i feel I love that, bro. I love that. I mean, you've been dropping so much this year alone. Like, yeah, we've been dropping so a lot. And and shout out to my features too. I think that's what's helped me too. Is yeah. the features have been able to 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 carry me. And I love working with other artists too. I love collaborating too. You I love I mean? that, man. Um, I was gonna ask you on the topic of reverse. Um, is there anything like looking back at your career, whether it just be as music or just as a human being? Is there anything that you would like to go back in time and change no. about yourself? About your, about cool. myself? No, yeah, about no, 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 no looking back. No looking back. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, looking <laughs> forward, looking I heard forward. Let's look forward, man. Yeah. I, I don't want to change anything, man, because I'm just so thankful for where I am now. Yeah, I you love that. Change. Well, to look forward, you're actually going to the Philippines for the first time, bro. So I love yes. that for you. You oh excited? My God, bro. I'm excited and nervous, bro, at the same time because <clears throat> fourth generation Filipino. My um great my <laughs> great great bro. Bro, my great great grandpa was one of the first Filipinos to ever migrate to Hilo. Like one of the first Filipino immigrants. Wow. So it's it's yeah, my 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 family's been like moving around for a minute. And my wow. grandma was from Hilo, uh, from Hilo too, Filipino immigrant to Hilo. That's l- sick, bro. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you're, so like, I'm surprised <laughs> you actually don't know too much Tagalog then, man. Bro, my, <laughs> I told my dad this. He's going to laugh. My dad is the funniest person you'll ever meet in your entire life, bro. I okay. told him I was going to blame him every time I came on air. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't oh teach God. me, bro. <laughs> but I do want to learn, man. It's just like that's why I'm excited to go. I'm a better, I'm a better learning person type person. And I don't know, man. I'm excited and I'm nervous at the same time. You know what I mean? Like if I'll be accepted or what the what what they'll think of me, you know what I mean? Because when you grow up around all my Filipino family, you don't think about trying to be Filipino. You're just Filipino. And yeah. um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I'm thankful because the family I came up with is the most happy, funny, good food everywhere people you meet. So, yeah, man. I love that. Um, I wouldn't be here without them. Same, bro. Same. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've uh, you know, I, I say this all the time, but like, when I was living back up in the Bay in like the San Francisco area, I was surrounded by so many Filipinos, bro. Mm. So much to where I almost rejected wanting to be Filipino mm. just because I was surrounded by it so much. Then when I moved to LA, I'm like, damn, bro, there's nothing but Mexicans here. Like where the hell are the <laughs> Filipinos, right? And so I took a lot of time as soon as I moved to LA back in 2014 to learn more about like my culture and figure out like, well, why are all the Filipinos here so scattered? And, you know, just further building this Filipino community over here in LA. Mm -hmm. So with the idea of like acceptance, right? Like I feel like now I'm finally getting accepted by our people um do you feel like you're accepted by your people our people the filipino people or do you feel like you haven't even scratched that surface yet i feel like every filipino i've met and and interacted with whether it be in person or online through music or just even the other night at parties it's always been love and they've always so support mm. you know what i mean so i'm excited man Okay. You excited for the food over there too, huh? I am excited for the food, man. I love food. That's <laughs> one thing I love. <laughs> what would you say is your what would you say is your favorite Filipino food? Definitely pork adobo for sure. Pork adobo. Pork adobo. Pork adobo my okay. aunt makes. And my mom okay. always makes chicken adobo as healthy and like it's good, but my my aunt makes pork adobo. It's crazy. Yeah, bro. I mean I'm with I'm with the I chicken adobo all day. I mean, I, I mean, love me and my brother too. too. Me and my brother, my brother lives here with me too. We still every like every week at least is spam and rice is one of the meals. <laughs> that <I> came up. <laughs> he said, my brother and rice. My brother said that's his. Uh, that's his. His. Um, what is it? Your last meal when you're on the prison when you're in prison. What is that called? Yeah, that's his last oh, meal. That's yeah, what yeah, he yeah. would literally. That's literally what you would order. Like, if you had the death sentence, he's like, bro, give me that spam, give me that egg mm -hmm. and rice, and I'm chilling. Bro, it's still so good. Yeah. Every time. I got to ask you this. You've obviously, you've had lumpia before, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, is lumpia an egg roll? No. Oh. Am I wrong? <laughs> No, I mean, hey, it's an opinion. I say it's an egg roll, and people get on my head about saying that lumpia is an egg roll. So I wanted to get your opinion on it. I feel like lumpia is lumpia, and an egg roll is an egg roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh my hey, bro, God. you been to Neary's? You been to Neary's in K-Town? I haven't. Is Filipino that a Filipino spot? restaurant? So when we, bro, when we mobbing. That's what we, we should do. Go. We should go eat. I'm with it. Okay. We'll go to Neary's. Yeah, yeah. Where you staying I'm with at? it. Oh, I'm in North know. Hollywood. So that'd be <laughs> oh, you're right. Bobby. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, I'm we're at one five six. Uh, I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can you can reach me at a uh, three two three. I'll just play. But we should grab lunch, bro. That would be tight. Yeah, let's do it, bro. I'm super with it. Um, Zakari. So I mean, I know you had just dropped reverse, but like, any hopes for like a new project in the near future? Because the last time you dropped a project was in 2019, like a year yeah. before the pandemic started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely plans for the project. I feel like the past eight, seven years has been me planning for a project. So this year we're planning to drop at the end of November or by latest is the top of next year. That's where I okay. my first album, yeah. Any names? Bliss. Bliss. Might have heard the title track already while I was there. We dropped it like, what was that now? Last year? Yeah, last year. Bro, these years are going by way too fast. 
And can I assume that these songs are like at least two, three years old? Or? It's um, it's all different. <clears throat> my intro I've had for like, I've known it was my intro since I made it like seven years ago. Then there's some songs we just did a few months ago. There's one we did last year. There's maybe one in the year before. So it's like, it's really, it's really a, it's really a timeline up to now. I feel like once, once I make a song that I love and I know I want it to be a part of the project, it's just, it's ready. It's tough. Oh my god! It's just all about timing. I also, I also got the pandemic too. That kind of like, you know what I mean? Mm. When everything shut down, bro, was right when I was starting to get booked for festivals and all those Man. things, bro. That like, if you if you look at my timeline, yeah, that was right in the middle of it. So also, you have to take that into account when you think back on what's been taking so long. I yeah, guess, yeah. For me, you know true. what I mean? Yeah, lost a well, couple of years. Ta- yeah, if we take out the COVID years, that means these songs are probably like a yeah, year old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like last year, yeah. Take out the COVID years, <laughs> but it's um, and even to say like, to say I made the song that many years ago, I, I, I would just go back on like the intro like a few weeks ago and change some sounds and remix it and master it. So it's more about like, it's more about the writing and what I wanted and what it, you know what I mean. Once I get yeah. that. A part of the project is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I will think be I, happy yeah. once Bliss is finally out, bro. Because I will be, be excited out, to see like the timeline that we were talking yeah. about, right? I'll, I'll be happy mm-hmm. to see like and kind of figure out like the moments that you were going through throughout the these past. I don't know. You said up to like seven years for an intro, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be a very interesting like seven year timetable mm-hmm. of music to, like go through. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. And bro. it's compacted down too. And there's um there's also a bunch of singles, bro. I have so many different genres and other stuff I want to release. I'm probably gonna start flooding more. That's what I want to do. I want to be an artist that releases more. I feel like we've gotten better at it this year and we're just gonna yeah. keep going. Yeah, I'm with it, bro. I mean, between everything that you've dropped so far and then probably even more down the pipeline before Bliss, like I know I'm excited. I know everybody listening to this is excited for it too. Um, where can every fi- everybody find you, Zakari? On Instagram, Spotify, everywhere, man. Type in my name, Zakari. Instagram, you can add the P. Oh, it's right there. Oh, yeah. What's the P? <laughs> yeah, Yo, that's always what you one. can find. My yeah. last name, Picaldo. Oh, that is super yeah, Filipino. Yeah. That's also a very I'm, Filipino. I'm interested on Facebook. Name. On Facebook, I used to get a lot of messages from Picaldos over there. <laughs> I definitely have. I definitely have extended family there. I know. I don't know in too in detail like uh, of it exactly, but my aunts and uncles and my dad were talking about how my one of my great great grandpas had another family too, like a, a half family. So I know I have I have family there. That's sick, bro. That's <laughs> sick. Well, well, you and I will definitely talk after you come back from the Philippines, man. Well, my name is Nico Blitz. Shouts out to Zakari in here. Beat this Philippines. We are out, everybody. Thank you. Peace. Thank you, guys. I like it when you slow it down. Like it when you speed it up and then up. Yeah, you're the one I know it now.